You're listening to the Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Dr. Charlotte Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode. On this podcast, we cover all sorts of topics that are of interest for professionals who are at the intersection of public health and entrepreneurship. And I'm your host, Dr. Charlotte Huntley. I have over 25 years of experience in healthcare and public health, and I have supported a lot of entrepreneurs along the way. I'm excited for this particular episode because I'm joined by a very special guest, Melody Rivera, and you're going to get to hear about her journey, her business, and some few special questions I'm going to throw her way. So, Melly, how are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm really excited to chat with you today. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm excited that you're able to be here and looking forward to our conversation as well. Let's just jump into it. Why don't we start with you introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about your business, you know, the name, just start where you want to start. Sure. Thank you. My name is Melody Rivera, and I am the founder of Latinas in Healthcare. And Latinas in Healthcare is a fledgling organization. We're just getting started. It's an idea that I've had for two plus years at this point, and something that I know there's definitely an appetite for, just having conversations with girlfriends and other folks that I know who work within the sector of really creating a space and a place that's not your typical professional development organization, but really creating a space where folks who identify as Latina and who currently work in healthcare, aspire to work in healthcare, can really build their professional network. We've all heard that phrase, right? Your network is your net worth. And especially as you grow in any organization, those higher level roles, it's who you know, how you get into a lot of these positions. So really looking at creating the relationships as being the foundation of professional growth and development is really the focus of the organization. And second to that is Building these relationships will then definitely increase the number of Latinos working within the sector. You know, we know that Latinos are the fastest growing ethnic group earning undergraduate degrees. In the last 20 years, it's increased from a million to over 3.5 million. We're here, right? We're not going anywhere. So there's plenty of roles and plenty of things to do within healthcare. And I love healthcare as an industry because you can be an attorney, you can work in HR, you can be a finance person. There's no lack of opportunity within the sector of what your interest is, all supporting patients and health delivery. So in a nutshell, that's uh, who we are and what we're aspiring to do. I love that. I also had a very big start in healthcare before kind of pivoting and getting into public health. I find that what you do, and I say this a lot, there's a lot, there's a broad field of public health that overlaps so many industries. And you're a perfect example of that. While you're passionate and leading in healthcare, there's so much about what you do that is so public health niche as well. So I'm curious, I guess I have kind of two questions, but I'm curious to know if, were you conscious of that, of that public health overlap? And, and then also at what point did you sort of become interested in public health or really think about it in that from a perspective of a professional focus and career? I definitely say I, I fell into the sector. My undergraduate degree is from the University of Buffalo School of Architecture and Planning, where I have a BA in environmental design, which what is that? Most people have no clue what that even means. I studied urban planning and primarily neighborhood redevelopment, neighborhood revitalization, and the development of communities and physical communities and spaces. So there's definitely a lot of public health implications with our built environment, right? I live in the Bronx. We're one of the most unhealthy communities in the entire country. We are 62 in the state of all 62 counties. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done here in my own community. And when I moved back home from college, I worked for a small nonprofit organization that owned and managed nonprofit affordable housing. And the academic pursuit of something that's interesting, and especially in the community I grew up in, sounds amazing when you're actually doing it. Not so much. I quickly realized, I think this really isn't my jam the amount of time and effort it takes to move anything forward, especially working with city agencies, private developers, it's years upon years. I like to see a lot more results a lot quicker than five years out. But one thing that did happen during that experience was they received a grant from the Hispanic Federation actually to wire their entire building for internet and for everyone to actually have a PC at the organization. So I'm dating myself. They had an AOL account as their email account. They were on dial-up, right? So 
I saw firsthand the importance of finance truly being the backbone of an organization and how important that is to achieving mission. And you can have the best program staff, but if you don't have the support to enable them to do the work, you're not going to be able to do the work. So from there, through my own personal connections, you know, part of a Latina sorority, and I was on the national board at the time, someone who worked at Columbia University said, there's a position open in my office, it was the budget office, and that's how I made my segue into finance. From there, I moved to student affairs, I was there for a little bit, I actually met my husband at student affairs, and we've been together for, gosh, 16 years now, and from there, I was recruited up to the medical center by someone that I worked with, and I was in the budget office, so I very much was able to use and leverage my personal connections and relationships. So I can speak to how important those are in helping shape and guide your career. So that's why I'm so passionate about helping to create more connections and and community with for folks, especially Latinas. And that's how I segued into healthcare and uh, primarily within finance. And I work in FP&A, so financial planning and budgeting has really been my bread and butter. And then the pursuit with, you know, the venture is really looking at I've often been one of the few women of color in a room, definitely one of the only Latinas, you know, and just because I'm the first one through the door, I want to make sure that I can hold that door open for someone else. And how do you create those pathways? You know, I'm not a clinician, so I'm not working with direct patient care, but there are ways that I know I support patient care through the work that I do with finance and through the organization. I really want to create pathways for other folks to come in and really impact health and healthcare. And in particular, really making sure that healthcare organizations reflect the population. Right. If you look at us here in the Bronx, it's a very government payer uh, organization. So you can make a lot of assumptions on what that means about the community. And if you look at leadership, those two things don't really reconcile. Right. So how do we use professional relationships to really change and augment the research that's being done in our communities and the delivery of care that's being given to, to folks who look like us? Inspiring, really, because um it resonates in a way that I'm very passionate. You know, I say it all the time with, you know, my consulting team, we are very passionate about supporting BIPOC communities, like large nonprofits or organizations that are genuinely interested in building relationship and connecting with, you know, black indigenous people of color. And it's, it's extremely important, you know, and all the things that you said, you know, being able to build that real connectedness and, you know, once you break your way through, being able to hold that door for others, all of those things are so important, you know, for the communities that we're serving. I'm curious to know, because you've mentioned um, some great opportunities, professional places if you've worked and gained experience and one leads to another opportunity. And, and I love hearing your journey. How has those previous experiences helped prepare you for this journey into entrepreneurship? Sure. So I, you know, I alluded to, you know, I didn't study finance as an undergraduate. I really fell into it. And my own curiosity and desire to learn something different is one thing that I think has just led me to the next step or the next step where I have a natural curiosity. I'm like, I should have worked for the CIA or the FBI. I can like, you know, dig and find information. You know, I'm, I'm naturally curious and I like to use that information to then do something with it, some kind of outcome. So I think, you know, that curiosity has really led to me again, developing relationships with people, just asking questions, or how did you decide that this was the best resource to use for something? Or I heard you talk about this project. Why why are we doing that? You know, what kind of support services are there? Who's involved with it? Who's a decision maker? I, I love to know who the decision makers are all the time, because a lot of times I in my opinion, some decisions are not great. It's like, how did we get there? So I think just through that, that natural curiosity and not being afraid to ask questions and not being afraid to communicate with people and not being afraid to speak to people who are, you know, above me, right, or outside of my level. I've never felt that anyone who had a title that was higher than the one that I was in was someone who I could not speak to just because of who they were. I've also been fortunate enough to work in environments where I've had a lot of folks really invested in me And I think partly because of my own curiosity and and interest in really developing me. So I think, again, going back to personal relationships, for me, they have made, you know, my career path to this point. So I think that curiosity has really just been that piece that has led me to the next piece, the next piece. And now I'm at a point in my own career where it's like, well, what else is there? You know, there's moving up within finance, but it's like, oh, that's interesting. But there's only so many PLs you can read that are interesting anymore. So I'm really interested in how can I impact and shape the future of public health and really create a space or a place that's more reflective of the community who I know is here 
and who I know has the capacity, who has the intellect, who has the ability to really be the decision makers. So how can I use my own lived experience and influence to help shape some of that? Yeah, I can see where your so much of your background is going to serve you so well with where you're going and what you're planning and intending to do. You are currently working full time and in, in building your business, running your business to, simultaneously. I remember, and I'm going to ask you this question, but you know, if you had asked me this question at the same point, I would have been able to answer it. <laughs> I remember just being very open. I had no idea that I would leave my full-time job and be in running my business full-time and as an employee of my company. I never, I never saw that. I was open to possibilities and, and opportunities, but, you know, I didn't really see that coming. So is that a plan of yours? Or are you sort of kind of like I was just kind of open to the possibilities or are you, what are what are your plans or goals? I think given, you know, the last few years and just the realization of everyone needs more than one income stream. And that's just the reality of life, especially if you want to retire at some point where you're still able-bodied enough to enjoy it. You know, I'm at a point in life where I do think about later in life a lot and how do I want to live whatever time I have left and how do I enjoy the time that I have left to travel? I want to see every country. I want to experience everything there is to experience in the world. So the short answer is I would love to grow this into being something that is so much bigger than just myself, right? And I really see my role here as being the conduit of creating a space. And it's really the membership that will really guide and dictate what it is that we grow into and the support and wraparound services that we're able to provide. So I think ultimately, yes, I would love for this to turn into my main gig, my my thing, and not really work for anyone else more so for just the time freedom, the ability to be where I want to be at any given point, but also being able to sustain myself and my family and being able to do that in a way that makes sense for me. Uh, so eventually, sure, I definitely f- dream for that to be the reality for, for Latinas and healthcare for me. Yeah, yeah. I relate to that and I can see that for you as well. But I remember, and even now as I think about, you know, what do I want to do next and what does this look like? I know that we've built there was a time where it was, I was like the solo, I was the person, you know, I did the work, I did everything. And we've built this business where we do have the structure and the team that gives me more flexibility and freedom, have a backpack that is my office in my backpack. So I can go wherever I need to go. And and it, it has all the right cables and everything I need to operate. The exception is recording. I can't record. I do have a travel mic, but I don't have like a whole setup to do podcast recording somewhere else. So I typically will try to batch that up before I leave or work or have a workarounds. But but for the most part, I do really enjoy that freedom and flexibility. And the team, as we're continuing to grow, they're taking on more. So it's it's much less me or everything relying on me, which is actually a great thing because I'm also not the bottleneck. I'm not going to be the thing that's going to hold hold up any progress. But it's such an interesting journey, you know, just being able to have the kind of like the good and bad all together because you do have to make all the decisions. But then on the other hand, you get to make all the decisions. So yeah, very interesting, right? <laughs> no, for sure. There's nothing that happens without your own input and action. You know, it was the one thing, which is really why I joined the mastermind group was really just the accountability partnership was the one thing, you know, I really spoke to you mostly wanting or needing out of it of, you know, I've got this idea and I've got these things in place, but I kind of just need that check in of like, hey, how did that go? How did that work out for you? I'm just like, oh, yeah, I do need to be accountable right, to someone else in, in a way on what I'm working on. So I definitely appreciate the mastermind group for for that piece. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that when we first had our, our chat and we're talking about, I'm really excited about where you are and things taking off. And I knew that this would be a great community to, to, you know, that extra support, that little, hey, how's that coming along is sometimes all you need. <laughs> so that's exciting. How are things progressing? I know we talked about the the membership and it's going to be very much unfolding soon. And Are we able to talk about it yet or do we want to wait? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I can talk very briefly about it. You know, definitely still in not so much idea stage, but idea stage in the sense of I'm meeting with folks, just having many focus groups and just getting a sense from people of what kind of support would you need or want from a professional development organization? And, you know, I use that language, but it's also more personal than a professional development organization where I really envision having this group of folks who I have this identity of, I am Latina and I work in healthcare, or I want to work in healthcare, but then also really having 
spaces and places for, you know, I'm a first time mom. Let's have a community within the bigger community for someone who's a first time mom or someone who is experiencing you know, a separation in their life. Someone who's, you know, in the process of ending their marriage, perhaps, and like having a conversation with someone else who has also dealt with that experience or in the inverse, someone getting married for the first time and having that space, space there. Or someone who's really looking to grow into that director level position, but really doesn't know how to get there. And having a space where someone who, like myself, I went from a manager to a director and I was only able to do that by leaving the organization that I was at for many years to be able to make that role. And I was already doing that level of work elsewhere. But life being what it is, sometimes you do have to make those moves and just jump in with both feet. So having just these conversations just to get a sense of what kinds of conversations do folks really want to need? Because we are not just one thing. Like, yes, I'm an employee of an organization and I do this for work, but my lived experiences and the things that I go to at home impact the way I operate and the way that I function during the day at work. And they either make me the best employee on day one, or maybe they don't make me a great employee because of all those other things. So really creating not just the space to grow professionally, but really those those personal bits of life that are part of who we are and who, that we carry with us throughout our day. And how do we help each other navigate those experiences? And how do we have a safe space to just have conversations and say, I'm dealing with this and has anyone else experienced this and really just using each other as a space for that. So there's just such an appetite for it, which is really exciting, which is validating too of the idea. So that's really just the, the place that I'm at now, just having one-on-one conversations, just small focus groups, just trying to get a sense from folks of, is this something they would pursue, something that they're interested in? And there's always been a resounding yes. So, you know, hopefully in the next month or two, we'll roll out our first cohort of, I'm hoping to, you know, somewhere between 12 and 20 folks, and then we'll take it from there. And again, it's really about creating the space and place for the connection and the community is going to drive, you know, what those conversations are and what kind of support they need. I love that so much. Well, I agree with what you say. So part of it is just, I think it's, it's sometimes how do you separate how we do one thing is how we do everything. So as much as we talk about this, this kind of balance and I don't like for my professional work to spill into my personal life, it still does. It, you know, it flows and being and having a community where, um, when life is happening, surrounded by people that get you, they relate. You don't have to have that extra layer of explaining anything. It's just those little nuances that are, you know, help it to be even more valuable and and extra supportive. So I love that. I also really love how you are so intentional about creating what your community wants, not what you think they want, but what you are, you're getting that validation right in the middle of it. And I, I know I've shared this with you before, but sometimes that is overlooked when programs are created. And I don't think people realize how that I've done it myself. And back when I was Early on, you know, after people would want to work one-on-one and I realized that I could not sustain one-on-one coaching sessions along with like my full-time job and podcasting, all the stuff I was trying to do. So I started creating courses and these programs were perfect because people could join asynchronously. and It it was a way that I could share because a lot of the, the needs were, you know, several people had the same questions or needed the same type of support. So I created these courses and so I've created them and then presented them to my community and they work okay. Sometimes hit or miss my best experiences is when I created that with a small cohort and we, this is what I think because it's what I'm seeing is what I'm thinking everyone's needing. And then I'm, I'm creating, I'm responding to like maybe to maybe break it down to five of those main questions and responding each time and building and creating that program with them in real time validating, yes, they need more of this. Sometimes we're surprised that we can go all from A to Z and they really just want your help to get from A to B (laughs) and it can be overwhelming. So just the best scenarios for the best experiences were those programs I created with a small group together we could validate and then roll it out to a larger community. So I love that you're doing that. And that's really something that's even just come out of my everyday work where a lot of earlier in my career, a lot of things that I did were very transactional, where someone would submit some kind of document needing some kind of approval. And it very quickly dawned on me that the small pieces of customer service of, thank you for dropping that off today. It's put in our queues for review. We'll likely get back to you in two days. That little touch point of saying, of acknowledging the person and letting them know that I've received what you've got and we're going to look at it. It's in a queue. That would buy me at least a week before they followed up 
versus the non-communication of, well, I dropped this off yesterday. Where is it? Right. So just having those conversations of just informing folks, right? I think gets you really far. But really just asking people, what is it that they need? And most people just want to be heard and they want a place to express themselves freely without judgment. You know, and I think women in general like to have conversations with girlfriends and friends and just speak so that they can release whatever it is that they're feeling. And they don't necessarily, or for myself at least, I don't always want a response. I don't need a strategy on how to address it. I don't need your opinion on whether my thought is right or wrong. I just want someone to hear what I'm saying and hear how I'm experiencing this you know, lived experience of mine and the way that I'm seeing the world in this experience. And I think that validation of just acknowledging someone's thoughts and feelings and hearing what someone is saying and experiencing goes so far in your own development. And sometimes you can ask those probing questions or, you know, it's okay to say, are you looking for feedback? Do you want some suggestions? Do you just want someone to listen? Like asking those kinds of questions, I think, really help cultivate relationships and and really help with working through whatever it is we're working through, be it positive, be it negative, right? There's, you know, those things that are exciting things on the horizon that you want to talk about. And then there's things, you know, that are a little bit more difficult where you do need a little bit more support. That was a big part of how the mastermind was created. We were in person in Orlando for the first time, and I noticed for the people in that small group in the room, I noticed that people needed to just be heard. And it was it was a truly a safe space because we were able to, you know, and I just watched it happening and realized, oh, this is really necessary. People came in from everywhere and they, and it still happens. Every time we have our retreat, people come from, from so many other locations. It doesn't really matter where we have the retreat. People will come in, but that there were a few people in particular, one specifically that just, she almost felt bad for taking up time to be you know, expressed so much. But, you know, we reassured her that there was no one in that room that felt bad. They were really getting to know her and she felt so, it was like a flower opening up. She just felt so supported because she just had the opportunity to be fully herself and not hide back or, you know, speak in any type of code language. It was, it was her vibrant, she had on a red dress. I just remember she was just like, just very bold and bright. And those types of moments and those opportunities stick in my mind because I mean, that's, we all need that. Sometimes we need it a little bit more often than others, but it's very important. And I think when you can find your community of folks that get you where you get to, you know, you get to that meeting or that space and you get a chance to, you know, sometimes it's whether it's typed out or just vocally, you know, being able to express yourself. I'm so excited for you and what you're creating. It's so needed. We already know that it is, but I'm really excited for you and these next steps. Yeah, it's exciting times for sure. And I'm just Glad to just push myself along to finally just really move forward with the, not just the idea and just you know, data gathering, but really implementing, which I've struggled a little bit with, which I think is just the the nervousness of, is this really needed? Do people really want this? But as I have more and more conversations, it's like, it's a no brainer almost. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so here, here's something that helps me if I feel like I'm dragging my feet a little bit. Well, first of all, we're talking about it on the podcast. So now people are going to be, they're expecting it by the time this airs, you know, people, you'll be much further along anyway. But sometimes that's helpful. And and also just reminding yourself of those people that, like you said, it's almost a no brainer, like people are, their response is, oh yes, this is needed and they want that. Then you can just keep reminding yourself, this is something for those women or the men and women that are going to join this community. And and it's not like about you. So you have to kind of get out of the way because it's for them. If you don't take these steps, because you're leading, if you don't take these steps, and it's almost like you're holding back something that your community needs. Sometimes that helps me if I remind myself that, you know, this is for the other people that are listening, whether it's getting that next podcast out and making sure that I've got it ready and or whatever it is that I'm doing, just remember that this is really for the bigger community. And I've got to keep it going. Sometimes that helps. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple more questions. I'm so enjoying the, our chat and our conversation here. We've talked a lot about, you know, this this journey and this step. There's two parts to it. I want to know the best and then maybe, I won't say the worst, but what you like the least. But considering consulting or more entrepreneurship and more broadly for you, but what do you like most about entrepreneurship? 
what I absolutely enjoy the most is that there is no limitation other than the limitation I impose on myself. I don't need to run the idea by anyone that I report into. I don't need to ask anyone's permission other than my own and just doing it, right? What I would say the least is just being the only one at this point where you do everything. You know, I'm working on incorporating and working on a variety of other things. And it is a lot of little things that add up to be big things, right? So I think that and just not being in a place yet where I have enough things, you know, to outsource anything, but even just the expense rate of outsourcing, even just right now without having monetized yet, you know, isn't something that I'm ready to do. But there's a ton of other startup costs and things. So, you know, the least is just the, I guess the behind the scenes stuff that no one really gets to see, but it's all the the glue that makes it all work that, you know, is the, the least favorite. Definitely understand that. Definitely understand that. Both of those. (laughs) So one final question, and we really have talked about it throughout this discussion, but because we are all very creatively expressing and supporting our communities in different ways, I would just ask you to kind of maybe sum up, how are you advancing public health, but also healthcare with your business? Yeah, certainly. And both pieces, right? What we're building is really creating that pipeline of people who look like the community that they're serving. And that's going to impact our research. That's going to impact the way that we allocate funding, the way that we apply for grants, right? And all of the support for that piece, the way that the organizations that provide these services can actually reflect the community that they serve and do it in a way that's genuine because they understand some of the cultural nuances. They understand the the language barriers that some folks may have. So it's all of these pieces that in the bigger picture really are going to reshape not just the organizations, but also the policies that get passed, right? And all of like the federal funding that gets allocated because we'll have more and more folks who are our own advocates and who can speak to the needs of our community in a way that's well-informed because they've had the lived experience of it. Oh, that's well said. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this has been such a great conversation. I knew it would be, but you know, all this is always something extra that we get into once I start these, but this has really been so helpful and inspiring. So I really appreciate you for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. And I'd love to come back and give an update and tell you about all the wonderful things that have happened. And I'm sure there'll be some surprises along the way of things yes. I didn't even have anywhere top of mind. I I would love that. I think that would be so wonderful, especially as we learn and, you know, along this path and being able to share with folks. But I'll make sure that we have the links to connect with you in the description for this episode and also in the show notes. So those of you who are listening should be able to easily navigate to the in the description, get the links to connect with her, but also our show notes page, which is if you go to publichealthentrepreneurs.com and click on podcast. This is uh, Navigate, or you can use our search bar and and type in Melody's name and it will come right up. It'll be toward the top as you're listening to this in real time. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Visit publichealthentrepreneurs.com to learn more.